Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome everyone again with another live session during Ramadan. Today we have uh, finished one third of Ramadan. Inshallah, today we will be addressing common mistakes people uh, commit at the time of iftar. Uh, it's a common practice for some people to delay the, uh, the time of breaking their fast after the sun sets. And in some cases, after the adhan is being called just to be on the safe side, they claim. Whilst the Prophet wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, he said, people will continue to be upon goodness so long as they hasten breaking their fast. Meaning, as soon as the sun sets, they eat, they drink, they break their fast. Another mistake related to the same issue is that some people prefer to wait until the adhan is completely finished and then break their fast under the pretext of being on the safe side. Again, this is against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is an exaggerated behavior. This is beyond limits. That's not needed at any case. Because as soon as the sun sets, a person is instructed to break his or her fast. Uh, some people, at the time of breaking the fast, they uh, get busy with their iftar and therefore they do not uh, repeat with the adhan. See, we're instructed by the Prophet wasallam, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, when you hear the adhan, the call for the salah being made, then say as the mu'adhan is saying, repeat with him. Now, of course, except for Hayyar al-Salah, Hayyar al-Falah. Now, one thing that people do not know is that there is no contradiction between breaking the fast and repeating with the Mu'addin. Because there is no text prohibiting one from repeating with the Mu'addin whilst he is eating or drinking. Therefore, when the Adhan is being called, whilst you're eating and drinking, you can repeat with the adhan and that's not a problem. Now, some people become so hungry or thirsty or become overwhelmed that it's time to break the fast. And they become heedless of the fact that this is one of the times when dua, when supplication is actually responded to by Allah and honored. And therefore, they uh, do not supplicate Allah Azza wa Jalla. It was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to uh, supplicate, saying, "Dhahab al-zama'u, thirst is gone, wabtallat al-uruq, and veins have become moist, and wathabat al-ajru insha Allah, and the reward is confirmed by the will of Allah." And this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as Hassan sound by Al-Albani. So at that time. It is sunnah to say this dua. This is the dhikr you say when you break your fast. And it is also a time or one of the times where, when dua is responded to by Allah and honored. Now, another mistake which happens. And it seems that as the days pass in Ramadan, this habit increases and it becomes worse. Uh, being ex extravagant at the time of breaking the fast and eating a lot and drinking a lot to the extent that one's brain becomes, goes on sleep mode and therefore is unable to focus on his salah, unable to stand up to go to salah, let alone focus during salah. Uh, so we need to uh, 
not to be excessive when we're eating at the time of breaking the fast. So we can have a heart that's submissive, that can react with the verses when we're reciting in the Salatul Isha and Salatul Taraweeh. Another related issue is exaggerating in the amount of food that is cooked. You see a family of a husband and a wife and two, three children, four children, and in front of them there is enough food to feed a tribe. Why? Because they're fasting, or the one who cooked, whether the husband or the wife was fasting and they were hungry and they uh, thought it wasn't going to be enough. Now if this food is later distributed to other people or people, some families cook for two, three days in advance because they don't want to busy themselves with food, and this is an excellent practice by the way. So they, they cook a large amount, not to eat it at the same time or, the, or in uh, one night, but to break it into three, four, or maybe a week's uh, meal or enough food, enough for a week's time. That's fine, but if you're doing so much for you and your family, that's an exaggeration. Some people are... <laughs> I don't want to say that. Some people, because they're so hungry, they don't care the temperature of the food they're eating. If it's boiling, they'll still eat it. Or if it's soup, they'll still drink it. Whilst it is the sunnah to wait until the food loses that hot temperature in it. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it's classified as authentic by Al-Albani. Uh, whenever Asma bint Abi Bakr, radiyallahu anha, used to cook, she would, after finish cooking, would cover the, the, uh, the pot with something until the, the, the food lost that excessive heat, it, became, it would become warm. And then she would present it to eat and would say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and I heard him, he said, this makes the barakah of the food greater. So it is the sunnah to, or a, a, a practice in the sunnah to wait until the food warms down from this extreme hot temperature. You see the smoke <laughs> uh, coming out of the food and people start eating and burn their tongue and break the upper palate of their, of their mouth and bur burn their lips and burn everything. Calm down, relax, let the food warm. The, 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 the father or the mother the husband or the wife, whoever cooks, can put the food on the table 5-10 minutes before the time of Maghrib uh, is due, and this will make it uh, lose that hot temperature and warm down, or rather cool down uh, at the time, by the time of uh, uh, iftar. Now, sometimes some, some families, and especially families who have uh, youth, uh, they don't eat together. Each grabs something and they, they either go to their room or go to the living area or whatever. And they eat separately. And that's against. Uh, that deprives the family from the barakah of the food. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by uh, Abu Dawood, and it's classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, gather when you're eating. Gather upon your food and mention the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will place barakah for you in your meal, in your food. Now, we're in home quarantine and the husband and the wife are facing each other 24 hours and uh, uh, it becomes, uh, or it builds up, this habit builds up, criticizing food. Whether the wife is cooking, or the husband volunteers to cook. Oh, this is this and this is that. The Prophet wasallam, as reported by Al-Bukhari, never criticized food. He either ate it or refrained from eating it if he didn't like it. So, let, because see what happens is uh, too much criticism can become hurting to the feelings can be taken personal by the husband or the wife. So, 
We need to be careful. We've got Allahu A'lam how many days, Allah only knows how many days of this home quarantine we're going to continue uh, to be in. So we need to be uh, calm and relaxed. So hungry to the extent that some people forget to say Bismillah. They start eating and drinking uh, heedless of this great etiquette and manner uh, and very important one rather uh, before eating. The Prophet wasallam said in the narration uh, of Ibn Abbas and it's reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, oh young boy, say Bismillah. Mention the name of Allah, meaning say Bismillah, uh, before you start eating. Now, what if someone, okay, I forgot. And then I remembered down the road, five minutes later, oh, I didn't say Bismillah. Is it too late? No, it's not too late. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever forgets to say Bismillah in the beginning, can say Bismillahi awwaluhu wa akhiruhu. At the beginning, Bismillah, at the beginning of my food, my food is not mentioned, but it's, that's what the meaning of it is, and the end of my food. And this is reported by uh, Abu Dawood, and it's classified as authentic by Albani. Another practice re related to dhikr is that some people forget to thank Allah Azza wa Jal after they conclude their meal. Uh, despite the fact that the Prophet ﷺ informed us that the reward for thanking Allah Azza wa Jal after eating is great. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, Whoever eats food and then says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi ata'amani hadha wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawlim minni wa la quwa. Whoever says, all praise be to Allah who fed me this food and provided me with it without any strength from my side or power on my part. What's the result? See how short it is after you finish? He said all his previous sins will be forgiven. All the previous sins will be forgiven. You need to memorize it. You need to teach it to your uh, children, your loved ones, your wife, your husband, your parents. Your... It's very important. It's a nice dhikr that results in an abundant reward. All previous sins forgiven for just saying this one sentence. Uh, now, since we're talking about food, I thought to include uh, with the mistakes, common mistakes that are also practiced at the time of suhoor or that are pertaining to uh, suhoor. Number one is that some people don't even eat suhoor or drink anything as suhoor at the time of suhoor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as we mentioned in the clip that uh, spoke about suhoor, even if you would drink a sip of water with the intention of suhoor, so you'll get the barakah. Because the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is reported in, in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, eat suhoor, take that suhoor meal, because it is barakah. You will have blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah will, will put an abundant barakah in your day, in your action, in your life. So we need to take that suhoor meal, eat or drink, whatever it is, and not go against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and thus be deprived of this blessing or these blessings from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Another uh, matter, uh, matter related to suhoor is that some people prefer to eat suhoor before they go to sleep, midnight, one o'clock after they finish the tahajjud or something. Uh, they decide to eat something, whatever it is, as light as it is or as heavy, whatever. And uh, they, they say it's sufficient. Uh, I'll just wake up at the time of Fajr. I have the intention of taking my... That's against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Tabarani, and it is classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, delay your suhoor. As close as possible to Salatul Fajr. 
And that's uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Another bad practice, another don't at suhoor is uh, excessively filling your stomach. Overeating, especially greasy food, salty food, all of these things, uh, especially salty food and uh, things like coffee and tea and all that, they, they, uh, they increase the production of urine and uh, when that happens, you become thirsty faster during the day. So we need to be limited. Ibn, Ibn Hajar, rahmatullah alayhi, commenting on this point, he said that the correct opinion is that whatever goes beyond the, uh, the amount or the extent uh, that is enough to uh, suffice you for as food or drink, then and thus lose the wisdom behind fasting and Ramadan, one of the wisdoms is that you feel as those who are deprived from food and drink throughout the year. So he said, anything that goes against this, fulfilling this, achieving this, feeling this, then it is not recommended as a practice. Therefore, we need to be careful. Last thing is that some people eat, even if they wake up before Fajr, they might grab something fast to eat, and then they immediately go to sleep. Now, what does this do? Besides the fact that it's not, health-wise it's not recommended uh, because it d disturbs your digestive system, uh, it jeopardizes your uh, Salatul Fajr. You can oversleep and not wake up, especially if, if the person had stayed up for a long period of time praying Tahajjud or reciting Quran or whatever, or doing anything else. And then slept that short period before the Adhan. It's very difficult to wake up. We're human beings. Plus you'll also lose the ability of staying up. Even if we, you wake up for Salatul Fajr, you might not be able to stay long enough to finish your adhkar. Asking Allah until you finish the adhkar of the Salah and the adhkar of the morning. These are some matters that are pertaining to iftar and suhoor that we need to stay away from. We need to uh, include in our don't list uh, for Ramadan. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us all. Allahumma ameen. And with this we conclude. Subhanakallahum bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.